Hey y'all, welcome back to the Master HS YouTube channel, your one-stop shop for succeeding in high school. Today we're going to be covering the top five hardest AP classes for underclassmen. Now, keep in mind, this video is designed for underclassmen, so I'm really only going to be looking at a bank of the possible courses for AP courses that are typically done by underclassmen. So you can see the bank that I'm choosing from on the screen right here. And obviously this is coming from someone who has taken more than 10 AP classes during his underclassmen career and has succeeded in them scoring fives on most of the exams. So let's get into the video. All right, coming in at number five, I'm gonna have to give this one to AP World History. So this class is predominantly taken by sophomores. So that's actually very interesting that you would expect a class where you've essentially had one year to prepare as an AP student if you've taken classes, AP classes as a freshman, and you're coming into AP World History and it gets harder. You know, you would expect to be more prepared, but if you've taken AP Human Geography as a freshman, this is definitely a much, much bigger step up as a social studies class. And so what I'll say for this class is what makes it so hard is not just the ability to memorize the content, but to be able to apply it. I mean, this exam is one of the longest AP tests. And the reason being is that it has an MCQ portion, right? And then instead of having one FRQ section, you have to write an SAQ, a DBQ, and an LEQ, all different forms of, of, of written responses. And so to be able to do all that in written form means that you have to know how to apply these concepts. So you cannot just be sitting here memorizing the vocab or anything like that. You actually have to know how to apply it. And not only that, there is so, so much content in this class. And I know a lot of people who don't really want to go into the humanities when they grow up tend to find this class a little bit dry. And I'm not saying that it is dry, but I'm saying that a lot of people do find it dry when they would rather be, you know, cranking out some math on the side or doing calculus or things like that, that tend to be a little bit more challenging, feel more like a puzzle, whereas world history tends to be you sitting down and reading a textbook. And, and a lot of times teachers assign like five, six pages of reading every single night. And to be able to do that for every single day throughout the entire year can be super, super tiring. And consequently, grades in that class tend to be a little bit lower because there's just so, so much content and you have to know how to apply it. Now, number four, similar to AP World History is gonna be for AP European History. I think this class is also predominantly taken by sophomores. So I'm assuming the people who didn't take WAP, a lot of them take AP Euro. I personally have not taken this class, but I have a ton, ton of friends who've taken this class. And from what I've heard, this class is just a tad bit more difficult than World History, just because of how focused it is on Europe. So the thing is, at least in world history, you do spend some time learning stuff that you've traditionally covered in your previous social studies classes, right? If you think about it, since you were in elementary school, you've actually covered a lot of world history, right? You know what the World War One is a lot of times going into this. You know what World War Two is. You know what the Cold War is. You know a lot of these different things before going in there. And so to some extent, world history was a little bit intuitive. Now with European history, Yes, you might have heard a little bit of it through your world history class or through another class, but just not as much as world history. I mean, there's just a lot more new content to cover and it is just so, so much more in depth. You know, in world history, you do cover a lot of stuff about Europe, but the level of depth that you cover it in European history makes this class so difficult. And sometimes it can become a little dry too, because again, you are being assigned five, six pages of reading pretty much every night in this class. And so that can make this class very difficult. And obviously keep in mind this format, the format of the class is the exact same as world history and AP US history, where it's MCQ on the AP test, as well as DBQ, LAQ, and SAQ. Now the third hardest AP class coming on the podium for underclassmen to take is AP biology. Now AP biology is just a very content heavy class. And although unlike chemistry and physics C, which are predominantly taken by upperclassmen that involve a lot more math and STEM heavy based um, things. Bio still does have some math, but just not as much as those two courses. It is just a lot more difficult because of the content. And honestly, the concepts can tend to be very confusing as are a lot of science courses, right? This course is definitely a lot harder than apes in terms of the content because you're learning a lot of things like the Krebs cycle, the cellular cycle, all these different types of things, cellular, cellular respiration that get very confusing by the time you get to the AP test and have to memorize all these things. I think what makes bio so difficult is not only is it having so much vocab, like a lot of those vocab based classes were like WAP and HGAP and CSP and uh, sorry, not CSP, psychology. All those classes are vocab heavy, but they're only vocab heavy. They don't really do much else. 
not only is bio vocab heavy having to memorize all these different terms, but you also know how, you have to know how to apply it. The FRQs really, really task you really well to see if you actually know how to apply it. And a lot of times you got to, you know, they'll ask you questions about like hypothetical situations, like lab situations where like, if I mix a certain chemical substance here, you know, how is this gonna change the entire state of this entire process? Like you have to really know the concepts at such an in-depth level to be able to apply it here. Now coming in at number two, I'm gonna have to give this one to Physics 1. This is a very notorious difficult class, even if you're taking it as a junior or as an upperclassman. It quite frankly is just difficult. I mean, physics is just not something that comes easy to a lot of people. If it does for you, which I know it has to some of my friends, great, but a lot of us are struggling. You know, we wish you, we had that same level of intellect as you, my friend. And the reason this class is so difficult is just two things. Um, one, the content is just surely difficult. I mean, you've had to have mastered, you know, very much like a 95% or above really in all of your other math classes, including pre-calculus is recommended, but really in algebra two, algebra one jumps, you have to know all that stuff, especially in trigonometry. If you don't know that content, you're like a lot of times at a very big disadvantage for physics one. And a lot of times what makes this class difficult is also the fact that this is your first AP physics class or your first physics class typically. Now with AP chemistry and AP biology, those other science classes, you typically take a year of bio or intro chemistry beforehand to prepare you, but with physics, you typically don't. The reason for that, I don't know, but that is the case. And I know a lot of people have said that's hard for that reason. And another thing is also just the, the fast paced nature of this class. I mentioned this class is so difficult with the content. What that means is you're doing a lot of studying outside of class and you know, if you have football practice after school and you just, for whatever reason, you miss that day of practicing, if you come to class the next day and it just feels like you can't learn anything. I mean, that's the thing with humanities is like, if you miss a day of your notes, you can probably come back in the next class and still learn the next lesson decently fine. But with physics and a lot of STEM courses, you can't really understand the next concept unless you understood the basics of the previous concept. Which is why it's so, so important to stay on top of your physics homework. The number one most difficult AP class, especially in terms of getting good grades, is AP Calculus AB for underclassmen. So I didn't include BC in this, but obviously that would be number one as well. And obviously it would be harder than AB, but I assume that that's something you would take as a junior or senior, hopefully. The thing with AP Calculus B, AB is just, calculus is so, so much different than your other math classes. Calculus is almost a, a culmination of all the math you've learned. Think of all the math you've learned up to calculus as a just a toolkit. I mean, you, you've you not really learned much in math, even though it might seem like you've learned a lot. There's Calculus 1, Calculus 2, which are covered in BC Calculus. There's Calc 3, there's differential equations, there's abstract mathematics, linear algebra, there's so much stuff past this. And so you have to understand that you don't know that much and whatever you've learned is actually just a toolkit. And so you're gonna take all those concepts and you're gonna apply it in calculus. So instead of an algebra two where you just learned every single function, like eight different functions or in pre-calculus where you learned different, these different types of functions, you know, whether it's trigonometric functions or parametrics or folders, you have to take all those functions and be able to know all the properties of it and then apply calculus for all that. And so a lot of times what makes calculus hard is not the calculus, but just the mastery of all the content. Because even if you master it, a lot of times we forget that knowledge, you know? We forget stuff we learned three years ago in algebra one. And so you really have to make sure you're on top of yourself. And what I recommend is just a day or two before, you know, starting actually AP Calculus AB, just review some of your stuff, you know, review your trig trigonometry, you know, review your unit circle, your unit circle, your algebra two concepts, all those stuff, and you should be prepared. All right, y'all, I appreciate y'all sticking around till the end of this video. This has been Master HS discussing the hardest AP classes for underclassmen. If you're taking one of these classes or thinking of taking one of these classes, don't shy away from them. These are still great opportunities. And a lot of times the colleges, colleges know which classes are more difficult. And they see if you are succeeding in these classes, that could also be beneficial in your favor. And I do have some videos covering how to survive some of these classes in the description of this video. So be sure you guys check that out and I'll see you in the next one.